Anthony on Air podcast, Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein were actually guests in the White House. Are you friggin' kidding me? Full story coming up right here on this episode brought to you by our good pals over at Hero Soap Company. I love this soap company the best. No power bands in this, no poisons, no cancer causing agents made right here in the USA by veterans for veterans and the people that veterans protect, which is really, really nice. Extraordinary. When you buy a bar of this there, Frankie C, they'll send a bar over to an active troop member, which is really Well, cool. that's just above and beyond. And then they take some of their money that they make off this product and they give it to uh, charity organizations that build homes for veterans throughout the country. Truly, Good truly stuff. extraordinary. You can help out by buying a bar of this soap over the link in the description below or at anthonyonair.com. It helps the podcast. It helps Hero Soap Company. It helps our veterans and active troop members. Exactly. That's four doesn't get much great better things. Than that. It doesn't get much better than One that. One bar of soap, four great Four results. great things. And if you like the soap and you want to keep getting it, you can sign up for their subscription, which is absolutely extraordinary. Five great things. You get a great They bar will soap. send a bar of soap to your house whenever you see fit, whenever you want. You say, I need three. I use three bars of soap in a month. Bam. Every single month, three bars of soap show up. That's what I'm talking about. They are the best. The Oscars hit an all-time low. Texas gains. New York loses. Elon Musk. Bitcoin, Dave Portnoy, Saturday Night Live. That's what we're going to talk about with Elon. Earth knocked off its axis. Old Lindsay climate change is in the news. And SpaceX has a UFO encounter. We have footage to go along with that as well. It's extraordinary. It's a jam-packed show. And what's great is that it's actually National Alien Day. So that one, it's good timing on the SpaceX thing. It is all coming together, my friend. It is all coming together. Uh, this this sickens me greatly, though. Coming off of our last show where Ghislaine makes her first court appearance, we'll put it in the cards if you're watching on YouTube. The link, check out that show. It's extraordinary. We covered her whole first day in an actual courtroom. Uh, so go back and watch that. Coming off of that, we got some more photos, even though we didn't get actual photos of her in the courtroom. We got the drawings. You did the great drawing, by the way. Everybody loved your drawing. Do you still have it near your console? Yeah, I, I do have it, and I kind of wish I didn't have it, but I mean, it's a drawing of Ghislaine Maxwell without Lawrence that, yeah. but I still do have it. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, show that bad boy up. That was extraordinary. <laughs> that was so good. I don't think people... We, we started doing that because I was like, oh, this will be funny. You'll draw a stick figure. And then you drew this like amazing thing and, and kind of backfired. I don't, I don't do stick figures. <clears throat> you Talk. were extraordinary. Anyway, coming off of that, we got photographs from the sun that uh, they put out, which was never before seen. The sun got their hands on this just late yesterday and they published it for the first time. So we give them full credit. I'm going to show them to you in a second. But what's disturbing about this is Ghislaine and Epstein got to uh, go to the White House because they essentially paid for the refurbishment of the Oval Office. Uh, How dirty do you gross. feel as an American right now? It's pretty bad. It's When awful. was this? This is back uh, in 1990, let me see here, 93? 1993. Yeah, September 1993. They were uh, VIP guests in the White House. They got uh, to tour the Clinton residence and the East Room during a reception of which Epstein gave over 7,280 uh, pounds for the refurbishment of the Oval Office. Pounds? Yeah. Do they know that we don't use pounds in America? Well, they did back then. Oh, I see. A source said last night, the photos show just how close Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein got to one of the most powerful men in the world in the most powerful building. Here's yeah. what's super interesting about this. And I'll, I'll let's show you the photographs first. Um, and then I'll tell you the the disturbing part of this that I didn't really kind of think of uh, at first. Well, either two things here. Either they didn't know what, what kind of scumbags they were dealing with or they did and didn't care. So hopefully it's the it's the first situation. 
By the way, Frank, excellent point, and both bad. Both really bad. It's okay. No, if they know. No, it's okay for normal people like you and I not to know what we're dealing with. But if you're getting close to the president of the United States in the White House as a VIP guest, some background checking should be done. I don't think they could let any Tom, Dick, and Harry. I remember when we used to go visit the White House, you had to go get a letter from your congressperson. Like they did. What? They do tours all the time. You had to get a letter. You could not, you couldn't just walk up to the White House and be like, I'd like a tour. You had to go to your local congressperson or no, senator. There's tours, the, the groups. You just sign up for a tour. No, you needed a letter. I remember. Wait, you, wait when, when did they, they've had to have changed that since then. I don't think so. If you wanted to go. So if I want, if, if a school wants to bring a class. Yes. To the White House for a tour. Yes. To get a letter for, well, I'm sure they have to sign up some way, but. There's no background check on the on the class. You had to get a letter from your local representative that you wanted to go. And I'm pretty you can't sure just walk up and sign up for a tour. I'm pretty sure the local rep did a little. I think that was the whole purpose, not just like they did it for kicks and giggles. I think they did like a little check on 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 you if you had to go. Anyway. Yeah, I remember this thing. I remember because I had a we went to the White House and we had to well, we get. Went we went to Washington D.C. and we didn't go to the White House. No, I mean, I went. I went with my family. Oh, you went on your own. Yeah, I went on my own. All right, so here's the photographs in all their glory. Uh, it darkened. Something happened. Yeah, I don't know why. The why is it darkening out? Let me hear. Uh, touch the here. screen. What happened? Oh, it's because I touched it there. That's why. Idiot. There's Epstein and Clinton shaking hands. Gross. There's lovely Galen in the background. Gross. I don't know who this douchebag is laughing, but he. I can't stand his face already. Yeah, it's a stupid face. And then if you look really, really close, that is if you pull back the head on that and press the button, you get down to the bat cave on that little statue back cool. there. See that? I see it. That's the Benjamin Franklin uh bust that you button. red button. Your little red button in there that you you do that. Uh so that's basically it. And they had a long, you know, here's another shot. Again, same green wallpaper in there. Yeah. I mean, we know that they knew the Clintons and vice versa. Right, but I here's mean, so here's what's interesting and different about this now. What we've known up until this point is that they got close in 2002. When you look at the timeline that we have, we could place Clinton with uh, Epstein and Ghislaine in 2002. This okay. puts them together about a decade before that and while he was president. So before scumbag meets a former president, kind of a, a gnarly situation. Now, while he was in power, giving money towards the refurbishment of a national treasure, a priceless you know piece of Americana, and uh, while he was uh, while he was president. So God knows how deep and far back this even All right. this even goes. Who to. knows? I mean. It could be that that was a one-off. He came and he donated money and met the president. It could be that they that they hung out all the time. Who I don't know. I mean, this is one photo ten years before. Maybe he, he and Epstein. I'm trying to be, you know, play devil's advocate here. Maybe they just visited and they weren't as close as they were in 2002. Maybe they are or were. This, this I, I could have know. been the first visit. This could have been the thing that got it all started. Like, oh, the White House needs a refurbishment. Let me give a, you know. Now, what um, the allegations on Epstein or everything that Epstein has done and and Ghislaine has done. What's the time frame? It's pretty much. It's not. It's not. He gets arrested for the first time in 07. Right. But when are they saying that everything occurred? In the 90s? Oh, from what the, the accusers are saying? Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I so don't know. All. I don't know exactly what, you know, what time frame there, but definitely. Yeah, definitely. Right. For years. So this could have been during or before it, uh, all the crap, all the craziness started. Well, I, I, I get you're trying to put a thing to it, a time frame to it. So, but yeah, I'm trying to get the, uh, how accurate. I feel like if we found out you were a scumbag in 2005, you were probably a scumbag all your life. I'm sure. Yeah, especially as soon as you got the money, which we he we know he he already had. He years had it prior back then, anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
But it, doesn't it make you feel like it was all bad enough? But the fact that he paid for the re or putting money towards the refurbishment of the Oval Office kind of disgusts me to a new level. Yeah. I mean, what do you do if you let's say you become president? Do you uh, you do another like a, a re second refurbishment? If I'm Biden today, I'm being like, you know what? Let's. <laughs> I want I want it all stripped out. Let's move the let's furniture out. Yeah. Down. Let's 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 disinfect again. Let's take it down to the studs, as they say in the construction business. <laughs> I'm sure I can't imagine it's that easy. I'm sure there's a lot of security shit in those walls that you can't just bulldoze. Well, yeah, no, now, yeah, of course. But who the hell knows? But I'm sure. But also, I isn't it like I know I know the political system works off of uh, you know donations. Right. But, but once you're in the White House, shouldn't we be able to cover the cost of a, you know, of it should be in taxes. If we take it out of the taxes. Yeah. Why are we taking money from people that we don't know? I don't know. I don't know how that worked. I, I'm... I mean, believe it. Look, you can go back to all the presidents. I mean, every single president has a sketchy visitor come through. I mean, you sure. go back and look at it. There's not one that. Didn't they host... all invited someone weird over. Yeah. They all, yeah, exactly. All of them. But I mean, this this, this one might be, first of all, the worst. This is pretty terrible. And second of all, it's the money. It's, you know, I, I know that money is given to campaigns. To me, that's one thing. If you give money to a campaign, I expect that. But to give, the, give money, am I crazy here, Frank? Am I making too big of a deal out of this? But to give money to the United States of America so that they can refurbish their oval office where the leader of their country and the free world does business if if you could uh, if nobody should have access to to give money no. for that no i mean if you're gonna donate money yeah i mean the one positive thing you could take out of this is that bad money was used for good uh, but still it's still dirty money but i mean it's at least it was put towards something positive maybe if you want to put a positive spin on this which is hard to do. But if you want to take something positive out of it, something good came out of this guy's filthy money. You know, the refurbishment of the White House. But it's still, we don't want that tainted, yeah. uh, you know, signature on that building anyway. And so the other thing I think about too is, you know, like you look at, so a couple things here, stay with me on this. Yeah. This is a wide one. I'm gonna, you're going to lose me. You got Trump, right? Who there's that video of him and Epstein in Mar-a-Lago and they're right. whispering to each other and they're looking at the girls. And that mm -hmm. was in, in the 90s at some point, I believe. Kind of probably. Or I had yeah, around right the same time, if any. I don't know. Yeah, I don't probably. know when that video was. In the late 90s, whenever it was. It doesn't even matter. The point is, it was a really long time ago. Right. And it's not a great look for Trump, and it never was for me. And the fact that they were looking at girls and talking and whispering and everything. Now, it never negatively impacted him because the Trump supporters are going to be there no matter what for him. You know, right. We can see him, you know, standing. You know what I always found weird? Yeah. Not to cut you off, but I'm going to cut you off. Um, that video of Trump and Epstein talking at the party, it's like 10, 15 seconds. I'm sure there's a a lot more to that video. Who takes a 10 to 15 second video at a party? I'm no, sure I saw more than that. Is there a lot more? To, it's to just that? a lot of the same thing. Just a party, right? But yeah, it's just a lot of the same. Yeah, they're just kind of talking and whispering. Are there any other famous faces? Uh, there might have been one more. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I got, you know, to be honest, if you were rich and powerful in the 90s you probably crossed paths with this guy well that yes yes which is you know in your control or not you probably crossed paths at some point right but i never here's the thing and this is not i'm not making trying to make one thing worse than the other between clinton and trump but my point is is that when you go back in time right with this stuff and you see trump there with him it's not a great look. And I feel yeah. like it doesn't bode well for him. And then when Trump's on the campaign trail and he says about Prince Andrew and, you know, Epstein, he knows Epstein has a reputation. So obviously he knows whether he took part in or not. I don't know. 
but he did know about who he was and they we do have that evidence that he, he hosted him at mar-a-lago so again not a great right. look yeah but i mean any picture take, with him it's gonna look bad yeah uh, who's in that picture but then you take this now right and it's the same thing like the the longevity it's it's worse i know i didn't i said i wasn't gonna make it worse or not because i feel like they're both really bad but it's almost worse in a sense here because you have them together in 93. We know they're together in 2002. We know in 14, he meets with Ghislaine at the restaurant. You know what I'm saying? Like all this has been confirmed. You're like, you're talking about a now documented 20 plus year relationship. There is no way you can confidently distance yourself from something like that. Like my point is, is, I don't believe Trump when he says, you know anything hey, <laughs> let me fill in that sentence for you don't hang a fastball for frank he'll take a yard um i don't believe trump when he says he didn't know or you know there was no shady shenanigans that night or whatever it was i mean there could have been not that night in particular but i'm saying i don't believe him when he doesn't when like to say not to come out to not come out and say that guy and we all knew it you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't believe unless you know, you're doing that. I don't believe you. And now you got this. And it's like, how can you say nothing happened and distance yourself? Like, I can't accept this, this many coincidences. I mean, over the what? Over those the 20 clowns. years, there's three confirmed. Uh, confirmed two of them by photograph. One, another, the, the restaurant one by multiple people. Right. So over 20 years, three confirmed get togethers. She's at the wedding for the daughter. I mean, like, this yeah, is it's crazy. Not a good, it's not a good look. It's, it's, not a good, it's not a good look for anybody when you put Ghislaine or Epstein with yeah. anybody. If with, you know, Ghislaine or Epstein with blank, blank is going to look bad every time, no matter what the situation. Every single time. Every single Doesn't time. No matter who it is. And it kind of leads into, you know, the Epstein thing leads into our, our next topic, believe it or not, which is really, the, yeah, which is the Oscars, uh, which hit an all time low. I'll, we'll get into the specifics of that. But I wanted to I wanted to mention this here because one of the reasons why I feel like the Oscars and I'll give you the f- information, the full headline and everything. We'll do all the Oscar stuff. But just to put a tail end on this Epstein stuff in the Oscar talk. One of the reasons why I feel like the Oscars failed miserably this year is because there was no host. They're on this kick yeah. now where they're like, with these award shows, ever since Kevin Hart, where they're like, yeah, we don't really need a host. And that could not be a bigger mistake if you ask me. Yeah. So I'm on Twitter earlier and I was kind of like going through things and that Ricky Gervais set came up when he did the Golden Globes. And he was like, yeah. I'm, I'm hosting the Golden Globes for the last time. He's like, this is it. This is the last time. And okay. he burned down that entire room. Do you remember that? Vaguely, but I'm not a huge fan of Ricky Gervais anyway. Oh, my God. I love him so much. You're not a fan of Ricky Gervais? He's a little full of himself and a little uh, know-it-all. That's called being British. That's uh, you're, you're really mixing the Again, things. this way. Send the letters that way. <laughs> <laughs> I did not say that. <laughs> but he says in like I don't know what it was about him that night. He really didn't care and he was there to lay everybody out and he criticized Apple for running sweatshops in China and he criticized uh basically How did they not go to commercial? It was amazing. I loved every bit of it cuz it was a little dose of truth, you know. Mm. But he says towards the end, he mentions Epstein. And he says, he goes, you, he's like, everybody was groaning at a joke of his. And he goes, you, you, you groan, but you are all friends with Epstein. Says to the, the full room of celebrities and everything else. And he was kind of like, you know, don't judge me. Like, you are all friends with this guy. You right. all ran in this guy's circle. Tell, it's the same thing. If you're rich and powerful, you probably, yeah, you probably came across his path, whether you knew what was going on or not. I mean, that's the, that's the sad truth. This guy had his, you know, 
had parties. He had his own his own island, and he had it. He got around to a lot of people, and so that's you know a lot of people were associated with him because he was, you know, rich and powerful too. I know, and it's hard. Do you want to hear? I think this is it. I'm not 100 percent sure. sure, but let's just play this little clip, and you'll hear. Apple roared into the the TV game with a morning show, a superb drama. Yeah. Morning show is a good show, by the way. A superb drama about the importance of dignity and doing the right thing, made by a company that runs sweatshops in China. So, well, you say you're woke, but the companies you work for, I mean, unbelievable. Apple, Amazon, Disney. If ISIS started a streaming service, you'd call your agent, wouldn't you? (laughs) So, if you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So, if you win, right, come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your God. And... So... It's already three hours long. Right, let's do the first award. The first. I skipped past the Epstein part. He said it before that. All right, so yeah. Anyway, you get the idea. I get the idea. But I mean, who the hell are you to tell people what to say? Uh, you know, I'll accept my award. I'll say what the hell I want. Here we go. He was. He made a joke about um, DiCaprio. And okay. this was the year that the Irishman came out. And he said that the premiere was three hours. And by the time the premiere was over, DiCaprio's uh, girlfriend was too old for him, which DiCaprio laughed at, by the way. Yeah, we'll pick it up there. Well, it doesn't mean he was, uh, she was underage. Leonardo DiCaprio attended the premiere. And by the end, his date was too old for him. So... <laughs> Even Prince Andrew's like, come on, Leo, mate, you know, (laughs) you're nearly 50, son. Um, The world got to see James Corden as a fat pussy. I thought it was there where he mentioned it. He mentions it in there. Yeah, I'm sure. If I cared enough, I would have kept it up go. before the show. Anyway, that's my that was my my last bit about he calls out the, uh, Hollywood for their involvement with Epstein. And uh, again, I'm not sitting here saying that Holly, all Hollywood knew him and everybody was there eating kids and drinking young kids' bloods and all that stuff. I'm not doing the cute thing, but I'm saying that there is an air of people are kind of really super sick of Hollywood uh, lecturing. Yeah, when they got scumbags like this guy rolling around in their circles, you know, because it was every organization, Hollywood, Washington, the scumbags in every organization. This happens to be a really big scumbag, but he's also involved in both Hollywood and Washington. So, yeah, I mean, you know, the scumbags in every organization, I, I would imagine, and not everybody in Hollywood. I mean, if, if they want to say something political, as a citizen of this country, you're allowed to say something political. I'm sorry, but you, who, who the uh, hell are you? Not you. Who the hell is anybody to tell someone to stay out of politics? Not the issue. They're a billion percent allowed to say it. They have every right okay. to say it. Sure. I'm but. saying people are tuning out because they're saying it. I'm, I'm saying at this point, in our political wokeness of Hollywood, which I would have to say is probably going strong now for at least 15 years of heavy political, like, I, w- what would you say, estimate for me, Frank, your thoughts, what do you think in your head, how many oh. years would you say in an award show did we at least have one long overdrawn political speech? Probably since the beginning of it. I mean, I'm sure there was something... You know, I feel like in the speeches. 80s and 90s, they were a little far, maybe not as much the politicalness. I'm sure there was, you know, there was something, you know, uh, about may It may not have been something we're super aware of today, but it, I'm sure there was something like, you know, uh, we have to do something in this other country or we have to, you know, there were other things besides. Well, I'm sure there were like feed the owls or let's make sure we yeah, save the whales. That's, not always, I, that's yeah. always been. But those are those are a lot of social things. I'm talking about more like 
here is my dead political stance on what's happening in politics right now. I would say we're on a 15 year streak of that happening at least I once a night per that. award show on every award show for that year. I think it's it's longer than that. I think we're just now. I mean, I think I, it's more so, you know. Yeah, it's not. It's probably up from once a night, but it's um, I feel like in the 50s or 60s, I'm sure there was a lot of stuff, go a lot of speeches yes. that in the 60s and 70s. That I do. People were saying stuff. Agree. I just I think we're more consistently in there than we were Maybe. in like the 50s or 60s. I have you, to go def- wa- back and watch yeah. all the I agree with you, though. You definitely had it like all ever since the beginning of time. You definitely had somebody pop whenever whenever someone, of course, important or popular, of course, has a platform. They're going to say something that that means something to them. Yeah. You know, see, my wife is one of these people like she like I put on the Oscars last night and she was like, ugh, like she's like she can't stand it anymore. Like she's over and it's it's slow. A lot of it is just. I think a lot of it for her is is the the politicized like she's just like she's sick of hearing about it like she re, she can find like here's a weird thing about it which I actually do agree with her to to an extent you it's like on you can get it on tap like if you want political divisiveness you could just go to Twitter and get as much of it as you possibly want sure maybe However. like 20 years ago when we didn't have a Twitter if if an, a big actor or actress took their acceptance speech and turned it political, it actually had weight behind it and meant something. Now you're just another person on Twitter, taking up more of our time. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it, well, we... the difference is when um, how do I put this? It's like um, it's like advertising. The more you hear it, the more it'll stick with you. I think that's the angle that most people are going for. So the more they say it, yeah. let's say it's one point, like it's say it's save the owls. If they say save the owls enough times, it's going to be, be, become I do, part of the culture. I do agree with that. But even at some point, like they like if Geico can retire the caveman for a little bit. Yeah, but they haven't retired the friggin' gecko. Well, that's theirs. That's their caveman wasn't working brand. Gecko's, gecko's working. Yeah, but they've always been the gecko. They always had the gecko from the beginning. Yeah, but why can't it be? Um, I'm saying even with the repetition, you stop it at some point. Here, there's never been a stoppage. But but my thing is with this is like they, you know, like my wife used to watch for the fashion and everything, and all that has you been can still out. do that. She just can't get into it anymore. And see, I'm the kind of person where I'm like, I don't care. Like, I exactly. I'll they sit through. Stuff. Yeah, I'll sit through all that stuff because I just, I kind of like want to see what's happening and who's doing what. Every, and, you know, all the actors say stuff, whatever they're feeling or doing or promoting or not promoting or or whatever's on their mind at the time. They always go through that stuff. They interview them. They. Well, listen, you know, and then they say, and at the end, it's what are you, who are you wearing? It's like, uh, all right. It's, clearly, it's, uh, clearly something's broken because for the first time ever, they fell under 10 million viewers on the Oscars. This is well, an all time low for the Oscars. Well, the biggest, I think, change or difference this year that in the past years is movie theater. We haven't been to the movies in, in, in a whole year. Well, Here's where I disagree with that because, and I, this, you know what? I mean, I, I, I swear to you, timing couldn't be more perfect. Here we are talking about movies and film, and we have our resident film expert who has seen every single film, Jay Sabs, joining the program. How are you, Jay and Sabs? And pretty much, pretty much been asked to be in every film as well. This is also true. This Actually, is... you know what's funny? I okay, so I filled this thing out online to be an extra on uh, Ozark. Mm-hmm. These people nonstop blowing up my phone. Yeah, because so why didn't you take it? it... Uh, I believe because it's, it's filming in Atlanta, which I can't go to right now because you know I have these two gremlins. So why'd you sign up? I don't know. I thought it was in the city. The Ozarks. Well, you know, true. I thought maybe like, you know, you know, and actually, you know what it is? It's a club scene. Oh, they make. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I was like, maybe. 
Oh, you could have done I your mean, Britney. You could have been in a in a in a show. That would have been huge. Well, I re- I was in I was extra already, so I had a lot of fun. It's called Going the Distance. Drew Barrymore. We already talked yeah. about this, like last year. Yeah, I think we did talk about this. All right, sorry. So <laughs> I might have not have been on that one. Why yeah. don't you go back and watch every single show, Frank, before you make? I mean, Frank, come on! Don't you know you have to remember everything I say? Do some research, um, Frank. Do some research. I don't watch this show. Oscars. Anyway, we're talking about the Oscars Hit hitting low. an all-time oh, low, yeah. Janine. Under 10 million viewers. <laughs> and besides the fact that we talked about that where people are done hearing their political views, Hollywood, I mean, I also feel like nobody saw the movies this year, but I feel like that's all Hollywood's fault because you n- never in the history of the world did you have a better opportunity to show people these movies than this year when most of us were stuck inside? Well, so were they. I mean, yeah, but th- these movies were made like the year before, right? Yeah, but no, but not really because a lot of them, no? they extended the timeline. It's a little bit weirder this year because usually the show's in January. Now it was in April. Oh. So, so the timeline got a little murky. Uh, but basically... Like you could, if you, if I'm, if I'm the Oscar, if I'm the Academy, they should have made a conscious decision in the months leading up to this stupid show to have these shows, have these movies hitting this, all the popular streaming service, yeah, put, you're put right. money behind it. What I feel most people complained about, believe it or not, was not the politics. Most people complained that they didn't see the movies. I feel like this right. was the worst year for people to I see like the I movies. I saw most of the movies. You saw Did most you really? of the movies? I didn't not see most, any. but I saw a good, a good, I don't know, three or four of them, maybe. I didn't which see. Is higher than, mo- than I most didn't, years. For I me. don't think I saw. Oh, well, I saw a, One Night in Miami. That was the only one I saw that was nominated for stuff. Yeah, I saw I saw a bunch of them, but the problem was last year for like eight months they couldn't make anything. Yeah, but that's not that's going to affect next year, believe it or not. Not not this year. This year, most they of these sh- things they were in should the made it, they should have made it a big thing to release it to us at home. I think you're right. I, they should have made it right. be, between all the streaming so, and and a lot of them are on some of them are on Netflix or whatever. But even those are kind of like they're like buried like on the bottom. Yeah, that's what I mean. They didn't make a they didn't make a thing of them. So they made a conscious effort. Supposedly Soderbergh like directed this this episode because I tuned in. And this is the least amount that I've watched the Oscars because even even though my wife didn't want to, I was like, I love movies. Like, let me just watch. Like, I just want to kind of like check it out for a little bit. I think I lasted like eight or twelve minutes before I was kind of like. Said. I- <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I lasted five minutes, and that's what she said. Because let me tell you, boring. And I that's found it. I found it to be terribly boring. I don't know what they were doing with the cameras because I get very finicky when they move the cameras for no reason, which is definitely what he was doing. <laughs> like, what the hell? And then one camera was like shaking in the wind or something because wasn't this like partially outdoors or something? Some of it, right? Yeah, some of it was like outdoors. Some of it was like in a train station. Half the people weren't even there. It was all. Yeah, I didn't watch any of it, but. It's you know, they got to shorten it. It's boring. They got to cut out a lot of the awards that nobody, you know, cares. Ab- Not that they don't care about it, but maybe then you it's don't have popular. To spend twenty minutes on it. You know, if it's like visual effects, yeah, people. Some people care about that, but maybe spend two minutes. It's here's the nomination, 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 a winner. That's right. it. You don't and then the other to- thing is, like, they don't like show the movies. Like, okay, like I, I sat through Regina King, who I love. And she's like giving us a description of like each movie. Like, why don't you just show that? Because show it. <laughs> it's because what you said, nobody saw them. I know, but like at least like show me a any. clip, and uh, this way I can kind of like get into it and be like, oh shit, that was a good performance, or that does sound cool, or whatever. And even if you did see it, you'd be like kind of like reliving it, and and kind of like be into it again, you know. I hear you. Well, I feel like every year we we talk, you know, you talk about the Oscars, and it's like. It's another award show. It's it's too long, and it it just gets, you know, it's it's the same thing every year. They should bring back. I feel like Oscars were never more popular than when Billy Crystal hosted. Thank you, thank you. It goes to my other point. Put a fucking host back in there. You yeah, need sure. you need a host. host. You do. Yeah. 
someone to drive the ship and, and someone it to should, keep the thing it, moving. It should be a comedian. I know you can Kevin have non Kevin Hart. <laughs> yes. That's what I would do. I would come back next year with Kevin Hart and be like, we're, we're starting with hosts again. And we're starting with the guy that we fired because he had anti-homophobic things 45 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, enough enough with too. the overly woke thing i love to be woke i want everybody to be equal and fair and have fun and love each other and be accepting i'm totally down for that but the like overabundance of horseshit again when you're sitting there with the epstein stuff in your back pocket it's like enough already and then my final right. point on this because then we're going to move on i also Keep feel like up. you don't have the star power now that you did for, to, to tack on to frank's example in the billy crystal years like you go back and look at the Billy Crystal years and who's sitting up front, Meryl Streep and Jack Nicholson. And like, oh, she's all... still sitting up front. Yeah, she is. But like, I don't even know. Was she there last night? I didn't see her. I don't know. Like, you no, don't have the other one. Glenn Close. Glenn Close, right? Glenn Close is great. Glenn Close. That's Glenn right. Close. She is good, but she's no Meryl. I feel like she's the second Meryl. Like she's the poor man's Meryl. Ooh, oh, that's not good. She's... That's a hot take right there. She's, that's controversial. Yeah. Sorry, she's viewers. Great. She's she's good, but you got. Let's be honest. Who's going to Glenn before they go to Merrill? I feel like Glenn's getting all of Merrill's True. rejected scripts. One of the few awesome women named Glenn. There you Ugh. go. But like, you don't like what? Like, you don't have Will Smith or DiCaprio or mm. you know Leo. why not any of these? I don't know. They haven't. Because they, they haven't, don't want to make movies. Yeah, they haven't been around. Even like when Brad Pitt you can was still there. Invite them to the Oscars. You don't have scripts. to have made a movie that year to sit in the audience. I feel like Nicholson was there every single year, whether he made a movie or not. He was just in yeah. the front row being Nicholson. With his sunglasses. And his boner. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. But you don't not have a maybe, definitely. You don't have a Nicholson anymore. By the way, I rewatched the clip where Nicholson walks by uh who's the girl that was in um Silver Linings playbook and she was oh, the yeah. Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. Mm-hmm. He walks by Jennifer Lawrence and like flirts with her and she like loses her shit. She's just like, I would definitely sleep with him like right now. Like she has this like whole like I girl mean, I, moment. I don't, yeah, I don't blame her. <laughs> would you sleep with Jack Nicholson? I think he's like yes, 84 now. Yes, I would. Oh my God, the older the better, Frank. Don't you remember? <laughs> I mean, hey, if that's what gets you going, go for it. If Haven't you been watching this show? Definitely. I'm Wait, sorry, Jenny. I walked all over. Do you here. even know me? Do you even know me? Jack Nicholson. I want to see how old he is. He is. That guy fucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm getting I mean, giddy sure. thinking about him. Stop it. Jenny, Why can't I it? find? Okay. Jack Nicholson. I don't know. Am I crazy, is though? Is it me, or wasn't there more star 84. power at these things in years past? Like. It's true. Yeah, no, I mean, because nobody to, wants shitty scripts. That's why. To be fair, I mean, it's probably limited audience because of COVID and everything. I'm sure they, right? They couldn't I mean, invite everybody. Next year, we're going to see Frank's father up front, and we'll be like, you know what? Fuck the Oscars now. That's possible. <laughs> that's, He'll be up front with his sunglasses and <laughs> yeah, his boner. That's when we'll know we've jumped the <laughs> right. shark. Uh, the Earth has been knocked off its axis. Don't be alarmed, though. Uh, it'll all be okay. Whoa. Let's talk about Texas and New York. We actually got a couple of things to talk about with Texas here. Uh, Texas has gained two new seats in Congress, while New York, California, and five other states lose seats following the new Ooh. census numbers. Ooh, you know why? Because no one's filling out their census. <laughs> no one's filling out their people census. People are moving out of New York. And people are moving. What? That's but it's true. People don't like to fill the census out because they feel like the government's going to steal information from them. Yep. Um, they already That's the so government already knows your information. Stupid. See, and then they go, people oh. don't want to give out their, their information. People don't want to. And then they go, Siri, what's uh, you know, they talk to Siri for an hour, but they won't <laughs> fill out their census. See, I fill out my census every time I get it. I make sure the first day I get it, I open it up and I sit down and I write, go fuck yourself, government. And I fucking <laughs> send it right back in. It's pretty good. That's patriotic right there. It's also if you lie a sentence on a census, that's breaking the law. Yeah, but I don't put my name <gasps> on it. Oh, my God. I'm just saying it's against the law to lie in a sentence. Is it really? Yes. That's not a lie, though. I truly want the government to go fuck themselves. So. That's true, too. It's true. Not lying. Yeah, you Sorry to that's tell true. you. Yeah. 
Um, but I find it interesting too that this was kind of taken in the beginning and middle of COVID because I feel like people are still moving out of these states like crazy. So I think this is yeah. only going to get even more insane. Yeah, when's Sorry. the next census? It's it's probably coming up in a couple months. I don't know. The Earth is off its axis, I so I don't know if we're going to get to another census. To be honest with you, it's all Whoa. over, folks. Don't be alarmed, though. It'll all be okay. Oh, good. When was the last time you got alarmed by a headline? Because usually the earth has been knocked off its axis would probably cause mass amounts of panic. And just, I, don't, I bet you half the audience doesn't even know this story. No, yeah, I don't you know, know what's weird? You ever see like this half the panel on half this panel didn't even know this story. I didn't know. <laughs> Two thirds of the panel didn't know. <laughs> you know what's weird? You ever watch like a disaster movie and there's always a newspaper headline that explains what the disaster is? Mm. Like, Asteroid like you need hits that, Earth. right? Like you when need did they print movies? that? Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or it's so weird. Like aliens land to on the Earth. Who's, who's if an aliens land and start attacking people? Who's going to the newspaper and writing a story on it? The newspaper I wonder, nerds. I wonder what we would do if that did happen. Like, uh, would we not going into work? I'm telling you that. I'll tell you what. There will be some journalists because they can't do much else but be journalists. And they'll still be printing the papers and Maybe. writing the articles. Yeah, it's but true. no one's delivering that paper. Maybe it might be an online thing. Yeah. But I don't see newspapers on, getting spider. delivered everywhere and blowing in the wind and That's earth true. destroyed or whatever it says. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, at least I read it in the paper. So Tumbleweeds in a paper. I just look out the window and see that the earth was destroyed. Uh, so Texas gained two seats. Colorado, Florida, Montana, North Carolina, <laughs> and Oregon will each gain one seat in the House of Representatives. New York, Illinois, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, California, and West Virginia each lost a seat ahead of the 2022 midterm elections. Oh. There you go. Our political map is going to change not only in 2022, but 24 and 6 and 8 because everything is going to get messed up now because of COVID. Like, yeah, like, think about it. Think about everybody. Think about how many people, you know, family members, friends, whatever, move to another place because they've been working from home for a year and their job was basically like, we're never going back. We're always going to be working from home. So go move wherever the hell you want. I don't know yeah, that's anybody true. that's moved. Yes, you do. We do. know we have a mutual person that we know moved. Oh, yeah. All right. One person. I know. <laughs> I know one family that's moved out of everybody that I know. Me? I know them too and know. Yes, you know them oh, too. Yeah. You know them better than we know them. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> they, they they didn't move yet. Well, actually, that's a lie. They probably did move. Like, Help. Somebody said help. I didn't think that was COVID us. related, though. I thought that was just the company. No, I thought it's not he got a, related. I thought just... he got a better job somewhere. Everything is COVID yeah. related, Frank. Didn't you learn how they kept track of all this? It's all COVID related. Um, I know I a friend. So. Um, her husband lost his job, and they moved to North Carolina. Yeah. Okay. It's nice. So, I mean, would you ever move, Frank? No, right? If I if I wanted to and had to, sure. I mean, I know what? Aunt Fam would move and like. Tomorrow. I would move in a second. So one of the one of the podcasts that I consult for, they 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 talk about like this stuff, and the the data is like endlessly fascinating. Like mass amounts of people have moved, and specifically from California to Texas, mm -hmm. and from New York oh, really? to Florida. Like those are the two big ones. New York to Florida or North Carolina, California to Texas. Like those are the huge moves. Okay. But, but like, um, you know, you look at like certain See, other places, like other little cities. Like I feel like New York is never going to die. Like New York City is going to be just fine. Yeah. But I feel like we shaved a little off of New York, Chicago, Los Angeles. Yeah, it's true. And those medium sense. sized cities are going to get a little bit bigger now. Which is good. I mean, I, the prices in New York and Chicago, whatever, will come down a little and people will start flooding back. That's, you know, just the way it's going to go. It's up and down. The real estate market does that. Yeah. Remember people how, move away, the prices go down. Think about how exciting New York was going from the 80s when it was like a hellhole, the 70s Ooh. and 80s into the 90s. Like yeah, it, and everything got cleaned I, up. I always and... asked my dad that, like, how is how is the subway? Like, how is this city? Because he worked right in Times Square, too. Like, how bad was it? And he's he was like, Janin, it was disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it was. He's I, like, so many people now. shot themselves. So many people shot themselves right next to me on the train. What? A lot of homeless. There was a lot of homeless people on the train back then, too. 
and a lot of people shot themselves right next to him? Shot. Shot oh, themselves. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought people were just shooting themselves. I thought, I, I thought that's what it no, was because that's what I want to do when I'm next to your father is shoot myself. But I, I don't know. It's, it's a decent point. No, he's a good guy. But um, no, in the 80s, the, I mean, you look at any movie from the 80s. Yeah, it's like so. Subway. I love that time. I really I would love to you? have been. Yeah, it was like, I don't know. It was so I thought it was very cool. Like there's a documentary on HBO about like um, cocaine in the 80s. Cocaine Kings, okay. is that it? Oh, it's so good. It was good? <laughs> it's a yeah. great time. I don't know if you would have survived yeah. the 80s, just judging by this conversation. Yeah, <laughs> you would have been knee-deep in cocaine, and yeah. we would never have heard from you again. You wouldn't have been one of the talking heads in this documentary. You'd be one of the people that they show the picture, and then they slowly zoom in on it because they're dead and no longer here. <laughs> That'd be yep. you. Oh, God. No, come on. You're telling me that it wasn't cool back then. It was, it was very cool. Dangerous, but cool. <sighs> Uh, you know what I th- often think about? And I'd love to get Janine and Frank's thought on this. Mostly Janine, uh-huh. though. I watched Thanks. that Studio 54 oh, yeah. uh, documentary and the movie, too. I don't know if I would have... Uh, I don't know how I would have fared in the Studio 54 time. I wouldn't have. I, if, if anything, I should have been born so that I grew up in the 50s. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> That was a fun time. Or twenties. If you had to pick a decade, that's what decade. Wait, if you had to pick a hold on, if you had to pick a decade to to live in, you would pick the fifties. Only because of like, I don't even know why. Because only white guys could vote. Is that why? No, no, no. Definitely not equal rights (laughs) and all that stuff. Because judging by your text messages, when we're not on the air, that's kind of the impression that I I like. Like a decade to be your twenties in, basically. Sixties. Really. Because of the music, See, the movies, the acid. The acid. But no, the, the political strife was not cool. I, I probably picked now. I'm just, I'm an old fashioned oh, guy. I like old me. movies. I like black and white oh. stuff. Oh, you I know. can't stand black and white. It's so boring. <laughs> it's true, though. I, I, don't, I, I can't watch a movie from back then. I just can't. What about a movie nowadays that's been black and white? No, thanks. It's just because it doesn't, doesn't have color. It's, it's no good. It's I'll tell you cool. what. That was one of the reasons why I first watched Clerks, because it was in black and white, and it oh, caught yeah. me so off guard. I was like, what is this? And I, I, I started watching for three minutes, and then I, I watched the whole damn movie. That's so funny. It was the black and white that got me in. All right, Ginny, what mm. decade would you live in? Oh, God. Even though I hate 70s music, hate some of these music with a passion i disco think i would have liked or uh, uh disco or, or, uh, classic rock. i disco, hate yeah. i hate disco disco kind of um, su- a lot of disco sucks there's some like classic right great disco, the mainstream stuff i think is okay. yeah if i could have been um like in that era in my 20s going to the clubs dancing studio 54 i think i that would yeah that would, that would have been me. See, I like the era I'm in now. Travolta. I'm good now. <laughs> stay in love, stay you hate in that, love. though. You said you hate that. I do. Music. I do. I hate it. I hate it, but. You know what I don't like about that era, which weirds me out what? so much? It was all the drugs and the sweating. There's something about all those movies where they're all taking Why drugs. Why do you think I want to be in there? And they're just sweating. It's just, I don't know. It's I, I never much. see them doing drugs in the wintertime. Yeah, there's that's snow true. on the ground when they're doing drugs for some reason. It's always that's very hot. Tr- that's true, I guess. They're in their underwear. It's true. It's a very uncomfortable era. Too much, too many clothes and polyester. I can't with the seventies. I'm good now. I'm good where I am now. <laughs> you're happy here. You're happy where yeah. you are. Or the fifties. The fifties. I'm happy now. Fifties, but it was not not the great decade. You know, it wasn't. Well, now you're just trying to be your woke self again, which is annoying. But before, no, when you were being honest. Of- and you were like because of music and, and movies and stuff. And your wife had that, to bring you slippers legally when you nice got home. Nice martini when I walked in. <laughs> right. I get it. It's nice. <laughs> but not. I'm checking in with your wife on a daily basis ever since the 420 show. I check in with her once a day. Make what? sure she's okay. What did I do on the 420 show? Because I know the monster you really are. Everybody thinks you're so nice. Oh, I love Frank. He's so nice. Yeah, you should see that. I'm going to show some text messages. Are you Monday. making fun of our audience? <laughs> Yeah, the ones You're who love a, you. Yes, an impression of our audience. That was, that was the mean. whole five people. 
Oh, that I'll was take messed it. up. I that love was the, messed up. Five fans. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You guys rock. There Team was Frank. definitely no. Since Frank drew the Galane picture, there was definitely an air in the comments of like, why is he on the show? <laughs> I didn't even see the picture, by the way. <laughs> I you watched the show. I watched this. I watched it. Show her the picture. Just the first two minutes of the show. I swear to God, I gave him 90 seconds, 90 to draw a picture of Ghislaine the way the court reporters did. That's pretty good. And I said, only a pen. I go, only one pen. You can't like pull out your colors or, you know, and he sat there for 90 seconds and and produced that. And people were like, why are you doing it? Why aren't you in like? Why aren't you painting for a living or some shit? I'm, I actually have started. I'm um, painting again. I'm starting to draw and paint again, and I've actually got all my stuff here on the table behind the camera. There's my paint me, like, markers, one of your girls, paints, and, and pencils and stuff. <laughs> and I'm gonna paint people like my French girls. Would you paint Janine and I like your French girls? I think that would be hilarious. I would not. Oh my god. Thank you though. <laughs> I'm, Clothes thanks, on, Frank. maybe. I don't know. Take offense to that, Frank. Um, <laughs> no offense. <laughs> Obviously, I mean, you could draw um, fam completely, totally naked. I think that would no. be hilarious. I'll no. put that little stupid purple heart on if it'll make you feel at more at ease. Emphasis on heart on. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Janine, yeah, no, are, you thank upset? You. are you upset that you didn't think of that first? Yeah, you... yeah, okay. pretty much. One yeah, guy no went thanks. as Frank said in the episode, like, I wonder how much these court drawer artists make one guy went as far as to research it and he put it in the comments really? yeah i missed it yeah i gotta look at that it wasn't That's a cool impressive. job though i'd love to do that what do you sit there for 20 yeah. minutes you draw whatever and you're done i wonder how many right. you'd have to do in a year though you know what i think is a better job though and this is because i've spoken to a bunch of them being a musician on uh one of the late night shows i think that's the <laughs> greatest that's a cool job, job yes uh yeah but there's like 20 total yeah, but I feel like court reporter, court artists are basically the same thing. And first of all, if you're if you're in Sheboygan, you're not pulling bank. I think he was pointing out that like court artists in New York City. So how many oh, of them could there? Really? Case. Yeah, and it's also you're not hired. You're like you're more freelance than anything. You you get you draw whatever you draw. You build a portfolio. Then you got to go to newspapers and and place and TV uh, stations and be like, do you want to buy my drawing? Or a, a place has to hire you as their as their artist. Like, well, no, I think like the AP rare. and all these places have have the artists, and they, they just go out to the courts yeah, and but do the, it. It's like a handful mm-hmm. of people, it know? is, and it's a, but it's the same thing though. Like they have to work for like an hour and a half during the day, and then they get to go and do their own gigs and stuff at night. Like that's why I think those those are two yeah. similar jobs, I bet. But I would go for the musician more than oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm artist. right on top of that. I'll jump in. I'll, I'll ask uh, Jimmy Fallon if he's hiring. Yeah. Yeah. Let him, let him. Jimmy Fallon's following me on Twitter. Do you want me to message him? I can yeah, do I... me a favor. If he can, if he can give me an audition. <laughs> Wait, um, is he really following you on Twitter? Yeah. Jimmy Fallon follows me on Twitter. Why? Ever since he came and hung out at me, hung out at that thing that I did. Does he ever really? like or comment on anything you ever post? Yes. It's very few and far in between, but he does. <gasps> now I have to go. Re- I have to go. Every tweet that he's made, I'm gonna have to go. Uh, yeah, go through it. What? what <laughs> Speaking Once again, from the top. Attack. <laughs> Speaking of uh, celebs on Twitter, Elon Musk. Let's get into this. Couple things with Elon Musk. Uh, one is he's hosting Saturday Night Live on May eighth. Yes, True. that's kind yes. of exciting. Yeah. What do yes, you think? Yes, it is. I saw that. How's he gonna I mean, do? I don't know. He was in an episode of Rick and Morty. He was okay. Is that right? Yeah. So it's not like he hasn't. I don't know what else he's, he's been he's in. Not but an he's not an actor, though. No, he's not. You know, like obviously. So I mean, who knows? Because some actors and actresses have been on SNL and they just sucked. You know? Yeah. I mean, people go and on there. You think job. they're going to be good, and they suck. That's yeah. true. So he might be okay. I'm sure if they use him the right way. I'm going to say know. he's going to be good. I'm going to say he's going to be good. But that's kind of how it is. I feel like with guys like this, it's either a, a, a over, you know, out of, it's a grand slam or it's just a he struck yeah. out. It was a musical plate guest and fell down. Oh, that's a good question. Um, sometimes they get the musical guest to join in on the skits, and that could save it. 
Do you like when that happens? I I'm, I feel that there's an overwhelming amount of people who don't like when that happens. I like. It depends on the musical guest. I mean, if it's like, you know, Lady Gaga or the Rolling Stones, if they're jumping in on a sketch, <laughs> that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. I feel like it should be a requirement that the guest, that the musical act has to do at least one sketch. Oh, yeah. By the way, it's yeah. Miley Cyrus. Oh, this good. is going to be good. She's going to, I bet she's going to be in a bunch of sketches and she'll probably be the. Oh, I can't wait for this now. Yeah. She's going to be good, I think. I like her. So that she's was good. Elon part one. I feel like there was three things. Now I'm forgetting one of them for sure. I don't know. About Elon? Yeah. Do you remember what I said at the beginning of the show? Uh, Saturday Night Live. Is he going to the moon or something? I don't know. Is he is he going to space? <laughs> no. Something about being a gajillionaire that doesn't pay taxes. A lot well, he got. mixed. He got into it with Dave Portnoy from uh, uh, Barstool Sports. Barstool Sports. Yeah, earlier. So uh, Portnoy called him out saying, and I quote here. So am I understanding this correctly? Elon Musk buys Bitcoin, then he pumps it. It goes up, then he dumps it to make a fortune. He goes, I own one Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is exactly who we thought it was. Just don't be the last one holding the bag. To which Elon responded, no, you do not. I have not sold any of my Bitcoin. <laughs> Tesla sold 10% of its holdings, essentially to prove liquidity of Bitcoin as an alternative to holding cash on a balance sheet. So he kind of stuck it up Portnoy's ass a little bit there. Yeah, you kind of have to know what you're talking about when you come at yeah. Musk. Well, I like Portnoy, but he's kind of world famous for jumping to conclusions because he might be, be right. Being a douchebag. Or, yeah, well, like he doesn't mind if he's wrong. He just wants to be the first one to say whatever it was. At least he asked, am I wrong or did I get this right? That's and he's, he wasn't like, this is what you did. I mean, he was, he was like, am I right in assuming this? And he was like, no. So there's, there's that. What uh, pisses me off is that he's a what how, how many billions of dollars does elon musk have oh he couldn't spend all his money if he wanted to right and he pays like nothing in taxes meanwhile we what we make we pay like thousands and Cash. thousands every year <laughs> so you know i mean i feel like we, they gotta to get on a different topic billionaires have to pay their share i don't know how they get all these loopholes where i mean it's got to be a percentage if it's 10 percent of everybody you know whatever you make 10% goes to taxes. I don't care who you are, how much you make. This is the number. That's it. Why are there all these loopholes? I don't know. It should be that simple. It should be pretty simple. But uh, I think Elon's going to start paying his taxes in Bitcoin, which should be great because if it keeps going up like it is. That would be funny. Whatever works. I would I would appreciate another uh, Doge uh, tweet from Elon. That's for sure. That friggin' thing is hovering around 26 I heard that's not doing cents. well. Yeah, it, fell down a little bit it's got to come back up oops as i'm hurting a little bit there i could use another doge uh, tweet from elon i think we gotta do something fungible or non-fungible that would be great well, that'd be the great fun started do we want to hop right into spacex since it's elon's thing or do we want to save the alien thing for last let's save the alien thing for last yeah what the hell uh earth knocked off its axis doesn't sound good it really doesn't like, it doesn't I mean, sound like that's something you can just get a wrench and put back together. Mm -mm. You know? So how, what does this mean for us Earthlings? So uh, this is what it means. The Earth was knocked off its axis due to glacial melting due to climate change. Ooh. Boom. Yeah, as a result <sighs> of glacial melting, the earth, the the earth, the earth has been knocked off its axis. Earth, <laughs> according to research, the North and South Poles have moved about thirteen feet since nineteen eighty. I blame Reagan. I think this is what trickle down was all about: the trickling down of yeah. the North and South Pole. That makes sense. Uh, with melting glaciers, see, accounting for most of its shift since the nineteen nineties, according to a study published in the Geophysical Research Letters. Also contributing to the shift were natural factors, including ocean currents and the pumping of groundwater, according to a study in the American Geophysiological Union's journal. Yeah, no, we're screwing it up big time. We got yeah. we got to shift this shit, which means the best, the best, the best thing ever. I was watching. I, well, I wasn't watching. I, I just skimmed the thing. 
But I think last week, Lindsey Graham said something to the effect of, I've been looking into this climate change yeah, thing. That's our next topic. And I think it might be. I think it might be. Oh, I think it might what be legit. He said, I think it might be legitimate. Huh. I think climate change could be real. Oh, and Lindsay, climate change. It's one of those things where anybody who thinks that, who knows that climate change is real, it's like, so it's like hearing someone say, oh, I think uh, there's salt in the ocean. I don't know. Yeah. I've been looking at it and it looks like the ocean's made of salt water. And we're all going. You guys talk yeah, about this. We knew that many years ago. <laughs> it's kind of welcome a- aboard. It's kind of a beautiful thing that, like, what would you say safely? Well, when was the first Earth Day? Earth Day it was seventy something, seventy two. <laughs> Nixon, I think, did it. Right? Yeah. So you're talking about a, a a good almost fifty years ago, if not fifty years ago, and here comes old Lindsay climate changes with like, oh yeah, yeah, you know what I think might be really happening is that climate change people keep talking about. Yeah, you remember that thing that everybody's panicked about except me. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's probably real I don't know. yeah it's like uh, yeah this we crying eyed piece we of shit is the him. best he's the best i really like this is the greatest oh, thing he's ever said do you have the audio of that i don't have it at the ready but let me let me find it yeah it's i'll like, be honest i have i know nothing about climate change i basically we're fucking up the earth because we're, we're polluting today I'll, oh. I'll just speak for myself here i've come to conclude that ch- uh, climate change is real he almost said China was real. That's what he almost said. Greenhouse gas effect that traps heat and that you see a rise in the oceans and acidity in the water and uh, droughts and disruption of weather patterns. That makes sense to me. I've uh, been to Norway with Senator McCain. Yeah, and basically he says he traveled around and saw it a lot. Saw I've been to Norway with Senator McCain. McCain's been dead for what, like 10 <laughs> a years? A long time now. <laughs> no, like three, four years. Three years. But like all the scientists have been saying, this is real. Pay attention because yeah. we're fucking this up. Humans are causing this. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he's like, eh, I think uh, they might be onto something. Like it's I'll a tell new you, concept. I'll tell you why. Do you want to know why? Why? Because the fucking Koch brothers for years paid into Republican campaigns and it behooved them to be climate uh, change deniers. But uh, the, the one of them, I forget which one, just wrote a book about how sorry he, I don't know what he got. He must have some terminal illness or some shit. But uh, he wrote a book that was like, we were wrong. We shouldn't have done that. And now he's trying to make everything right. So now that there's no money coming in anymore, this I, fucking guy is like, oh yeah, yeah, I think it's yeah, I think it's whatever the wealthiest right. guy who pays him says. That's what he says. Yeah, he's right. he's a fr- he's another fraud. That's which goes all he is. which goes back to my thing of you really can't be passionate about any politician because they're it's all WWE. I don't know. It's all how, made up. I don't know how mm-hmm. we've gotten to the point where politicians can accept money. It should be they get a salary, and that's it. Why they get donations and all this stuff, I don't understand. Because you got to run a campaign. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, fine. It should not need be... need to show people. It shouldn't yeah, be... It'll uh, always be corrupt. You could run a campaign, but you should be able to run it through your... Sa- if you can run it with not your salary, corruptly. great. Not corruptly, yeah. You know, except yeah. donations from citizens, but not from organizations. But this is just... Uh, th- this is amazing to me. This is like when the Catholic Church was like, oh, it's okay to be gay. It's like, what the fuck? Like, how could you just turn on a dime and expect everybody to be like... Wait a minute. Like, great. Like, not take you to task for the year's worth of bullshit that you were, you know, that you were causing. Wait, what was the Catholic Church says what? I missed it. The Catholic Church, (laughs) like, they were, they, they, you know, they've been coming more and more accepting of of homosexuality, right? Right. Up Mm -hmm. until recently when they walked it all back. But still, like, there was, like, this thing of, like, one day you're criticizing people like crazy, and then the next day you're like, oh, no, that's okay. Like, I don't understand how that doesn't. change in leadership. But how does that not destroy the credibility of the entity that is making such a 180? Well, when and it's not the change. Hold on. Let me just finish this, Frank. I'm sorry. It's not the change that I criticize because obviously acknowledging climate change is good and and accepting homosexuality is good. 
it's it's the it's how ardent they were prior to the change. Well, as everything ch <laughs> as we progress, times change, and even uh, back when they first created the church, it was whatever you do on earth because. Jesus in the Bible, he said he knew things are going to change, and as the church grew, you're gonna, it's everything's going to change. How do you, so how do we know this? Because he told April O'Neil in an interview. Is that what happened? Here we go. Can't you know? Can't have a serious conversation with you. <laughs> everything's got to be a big joke. No, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's like when he a product said, has ten percent more of whatever it has in it. You're kind of like, well, why are we letting you slide for all the shitty, you know, stuff you were selling us for the last twenty no. years? No one's letting anything slide. It's just when something changes for the good, then that's seen as a positive, obviously. So when the church says something that changes for the good, it's held that like if the Pope says something and makes it the law of the church, I want to, I want a gesture. To I want a little, I want a little, I feel like, you know, we should throw a couple of brunches the, the gays way. You know what I'm saying? That's what we should do. Something. What are we doing? Let's we got to do something like the, the Catholic Church should have to church. go out and get sure. get a nice get a, a couple of couple of thousand gift cards to try and make <laughs> it up to people for how shitty they were pre previous. Yeah, well, there's a same lot for of... the Republicans. You want to you want to come around now? Well, you should have to foot the bill a little bit more for this one. Then, you know, whatever. Here's the best part about Lindsey Graham, though. He goes. I'm going to have to get together with the rest of the Republicans to come up with a plan to solve this. It's like, hold on, like, guy. Yeah. You got here five fucking minutes ago, and now yeah. you're going to be the solution to the problem. To quote yeah. uh, John McClain, welcome to the party, pal. <laughs> it's like you got to be shitting me. It's, it's right. at the same yeah. time. Democrats I, have got 100 plans for you. Take your pick. And some some crazy, wacky plans. There was a tweet, by the way. The Texas governor just sent out a tweet which this can't be real he was basically saying <laughs> part of it was it came from vox news and fox not that i'm or, vox or fox 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 who's okay. the go, who's the governor abbott what's his name hey Good. abbott i don't know probably <laughs> abbott let me see if i can find this son of a bitch anyway the fox was highlighting governor abbott uh, Fox was highlighting the uh, Biden plan, tax, not tax plan, environmental plan, whatever the hell it was. Mm -hmm. And so supposedly in there and maybe it's in there. I don't know if it is in there. I'm, I'm, I'd be very concerned. So I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, but he, it basically in there was something to the extent of like it would limit the amount of meat that people could eat. I saw that. And no, it's yes. bullshit. It's not in there. Maybe. Ow. That and not could trying to control the meat industry. Oh, is that what it was? I just I loved Abbott's tweet, which was <laughs> he screenshot. OK, so this is what it was. It would cut. Supposedly it would cut 90 percent of the red meat out of a diet. You would have max okay. four pounds of meat. You'd be allowed four pounds of meat per year and one burger per month. And oh Abbott. This is what Abbott tweeted. This is the best. I can't. Not going to happen in Texas. I mean, yeah, exactly. that's just such. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's that ridiculous. Be like, that's I bet ridiculous. you this son of a bitch sent out a campaign email to raise money. Like, they're trying to take our meat away from us. And it's not going to happen. So on my stupid. What they should. I mean, I'm sorry, but coal has to go. I love everybody that works in coal. But it's time to modernize what we do for energy. It's coal is is the past. We yeah, but used Frank, to use... what about clean coal? Yeah, I don't think you're thinking of that. Oh yeah, clean, sure. Like uh, I remember when? No, never mind. I'm not gonna do it because I'm just gonna get eye rolls. Yeah. So. Also, you're ignoring those new Teslas mm -hmm. that run purely on coal. So. Oh sure. And just, as know. an Italian, how could you turn your back on coal-fired pizza like this? That's what I, makes me the oh, most. I prefer microwaves. Pizza. No, I'm kidding. Oh. How Getting. fucking how fucking great is coal fired pizza though? It's, not, it's, it's really good. It's the I, honestly, fucking best. Does it, I, I to be honest? To me, that's I, my favorite. I feel like you give me coal fired pizza and regular brick oven pizza. If if there's a difference, it's slight. You know how I know you haven't oh, had oh real God. coal fired pizza because you I've just said it. what you said. I've had it. It's, Lies. It's, 
it's not a. And don't difference. say Anthony's cold fired pizza. Not yeah. Anthony. No. I, I was no, just gonna ask Anthony. Anthony. How do they get away? That was like a national chain. How do they get away with that? There's there's not coal in there. I know. It's illegal to cook like in a pizza oven with coal. In fact, I think there's only four like pizza places. This might be just New York. There's only four pizza places that have been grandfathered in that they can still cook with coal because yeah, they've been doing great. it since the beginning of time. Yeah, but, oh, it's but so coal's, good. Coal's oh, great. that's my favorite kind. It's the you best. can't that's... legally have it in a restaurant, but yeah, it's great. No, it's so good. Especially from Naples. Cook with plutonium. No, but I, let's. Italy. All right, but take a minute from being serious. No. <laughs> Frank, do you need a spanking? You're so angry these days. You are so angry. No, I will not try cold fire. Hold on, pizza. Look, I'm saying all this with a big smile. I don't, you know. Hey, you're trying to bring it back to the serious energy conversation. I'm trying to talk about food and my obsession of food. It always comes back to food. That, you. you know, there are a few places on Long Island that have it. And there's actually like uh, food trucks that have it too, specifically just for that kind of pizza. Can you do that on a food truck? Yes, you can. I'll tell you what, I'm going to get Lindsey Graham on this because I'd like to get him to expand our coal fired pizza. And I think he's the guy who could do it. Uh, coal should be modernized. Anybody who works with coal, it should be transferred over to well, renewable clean energy. It should be. This is another thing that's boring. Except for pizza. Except for pizza. Except for we got to keep the coal and pizza. Sorry. Keep the coal and pizza. This is the other thing that's this boring. Is be boring. Everybody okay. knows. I'm going to take 10 seconds. Everybody oh, knows yeah. that coal is not good for you. But in order to win certain states in a presidential election who has big coal industries, you have to say you like coal. So that's essentially well, the only reason why we still have a coal industry to this day is because every politician has to promise not to eliminate it in order to get the votes from that state in order to win see? the office. That's, that's I mean, basically what set, it comes down to. Why don't, why don't we have steam-powered locomotives anymore? I mean, yeah. we have to progress. We have to go forward in our... Eventually we will. In our technology. So coal, it, it, we have other more practical and more uh, sustainable and cleaner energy available to us. Yeah. That's what we need to get. Believe to me, it I would mean, be nothing to take that old dirty coal plant and turn it into a fucking solar plant. It like, like I this. can't say it would be nothing. It would be uh, it would be a prog. A it project. would take five minutes. Oh, God. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> but a couple of panels on the roof. You're all set. You're done. It's over. <laughs> and you just train whoever works with coal. You don't fire them. You just train them to do something else. That's have it. we have we thought about just installing massive pizza ovens at some of these old coal Ooh. things and I mean, we start shipping out pizza uh, it's, can we do like I, wind, I like this better yeah wind powered pizza ovens i don't know that's close cancer good? i think that's what i uh, heard gotta watch those windmills yeah gotta get windmill cancer he's finally making some good points i like this guy um <laughs> spacex and the ufo this is awesome this is crazy uh so again this is a clip? yeah this is a elon thing because spacex is his his baby they recorded they were up they shot a spacex up there they were you know recording it and then just a just a little alien thing buzzes by he waves too Ooh. as he goes by you want to see it no i didn't see this here's a gif of it right here it's so, a ufo yeah it's so gonna, there's, there's the there spacex is. ship and there's that little thing just, just, just what is that zipping by exactly we don't know but to be fair from what i understand <laughs> All around Earth, orbiting Earth, is a lot of space junk. You know, just mm. pieces of sh old ships and uh, parts of like old satellites and things. It's just, it's just a lot of that crap is orbiting Earth constantly. So it could be a piece of space junk. I mean, especially that close to the Earth. <coughs> but it looks kind of, it looks suspicious. And to get that close. Mm -hmm. Now, that's are, suspicious. Are you saying that because you believe it or because you've gotten the vaccine and that's what uh, Bill Gates programmed you to say? Now? <laughs> Definitely. I was visited by men in black suits. They told me to say because <sighs> that's what it sounds like to me. No, I actually I believe there are aliens. I believe there, you know, there's something else, you know, but I don't know if that was it. <laughs> you know, I've you know, I, I feel like there's. There's some cool Ooh, shots of 
you know, there's videos out there with some weird sightings and stuff like that. That it's, you look at it and you go, huh. I just, I, I just, you know what I really want one day? I just want an alien encounter in my life. Like, ever since I was a little girl, I always wanted to meet an alien. So you want you to meet an alien, not like yeah, I want, planet. I, no, no, myself. I want myself to oh. have an alien encounter. No, I disagree. Why? I want it to happen. I don't want it to happen to me. I'll tell you what the oh, worst no, thing. Oh, no, I want it to happen to me. No, the worst thing that can happen, this is my worst nightmare. An alien plops down and my phone dies and nobody's around. And I just, I, <gasps> I, and, I, and, I, and oh now you're God. stuck with, you saw the alien and what? Now you have to convince everybody? Now you're alien guy. Yeah. Well, yeah, like, uh, yeah. If you, I feel like I would be able to tell if you came to me and were like really convinced and you were saying, this is what I saw, and you described it, I could tell if you're bullshitting or if you're serious about it. Yeah, but who's going to believe you? I mean, I appreciate that That's you would true. believe me, but now you're like, oh, that crazy asshole and his all crazy See, asshole friends. Wait, you don't want it to happen because of the off chance that you might have a, a phone that's dead? No, no, no. I, I no, because I... I'm scared I, of the anal probe on that. Am I, though? Because, uh, you know, could use some spicing up. No, I... I I'm scared of like it will happen and no and then no one will believe me. Yeah, nobody will believe so you, me, and I will have to be the pessimist. person that has to convince. It. it would be like getting a hole in one and nobody's there to see it. There's no point. I'd rather so not then get you it. You don't want to get a hole in one. I'd rather not get it. <laughs> You'd rather never get a hole in one. Because then there's gonna be people like like sure you did it, sure you did, and that will drive me crazy. Yeah, but what if it happens and everything goes right and you do get a like a video of it? No, you gotta fine. be an optimist. That's you got you're looking at it and going, I know it's gonna happen. This is gonna happen. I don't want it to happen because I'm not gonna get footage of it. Honestly, you think, I want it to happen because I'm gonna get footage of it. But then that's it. Then you're now you're alien guy. And that's all anybody's <laughs> gonna want to talk to you about is that time that oh, you met God, the alien. I would love that. I would love it. I would love that. I'm sorry, but I need to meet one. I, I always found it very interesting. Um not scared. I want it to happen to me. Did you ever see anything in the sky? Maybe. Uh, that's a lie. You wouldn't be scared. No, Come I think on. it would be very cool. Come on. I feel like it depends on what happens. Like if it's well, all of a sudden see... boom in your room and you're like, holy shit. Yeah. You know, that's weird. But if it's like on your lawn going, hey, how you doing? Well, I've hard. seen enough alien movies to not be scared. So you're prepared. <laughs> okay. I know. I, think that's I my know what to do. <laughs> I know what to do. You throw water on them. You'll be fine. There you go. It'll melt. That's actually one of my favorite movies. So stop, Frank. And if you see a pulsating egg, just keep you know cover your face and walk away. Wait, are you talking about uh, what is or it? War of the it. Worlds. <laughs> what? With no. The... Um, you're thinking of uh, Frank's thinking of the one with uh, Mel oh, Gibson, science. right? Yeah. Yeah. M Night oh, I love that movie. I yeah. love that movie. It's a good movie. I like that movie too. That was a really. Isn't good it one. a good movie? Right. Yes, I agree. Um, but yeah, the, you, you ever see Signs? Yeah, I, I thought it was War of the Worlds where they were like they couldn't function with that's water. another good. That's another no. The, no, the they, water one is is signs. is signs. War of the Worlds is they just they can't handle it's fire virus. No, no, no it's it's they they contract the, whatever it? virus and they they oh. die off because of that. The water one is dumb. You you can't handle water yet you come to the planet that's like ninety percent covered in water. Like come on. Yeah, I don't know what you're doing there in the first. What? Why are they there? Yeah, that's a bad call, if you ask me. Yeah, you don't land on Earth. You land on Mars where there's no water. I just like how Janine saw E.T. and feels qualified to handle the alien <laughs> encounter. That's my favorite You give him Reese's this. Pieces, you're all set. <laughs> you somehow make him phone home. You put him in your basket on your bike and you're good. Yeah, like I feel I would I would be frustrated if somebody if I ran into somebody who couldn't speak my language. And I had to communicate with them. Like, I feel like we could get it done. But I feel like meeting yeah, an alien is that times a million. Use your phone for the um, translation, like the translation, and you'll be fine. I don't think they have alien translation <laughs> on Google. Yeah. You don't think so? Okay. Like Martian they come in translations? They to study us. Believe me, they have it. All right. <laughs> what was the movie? There was some movie where they knew an alien was coming. And so they were preparing, like, to, to greet Arrival? them. I don't know, but it was like they had a helicopter on it. They had a helicopter there, 
And the helicopter took off and it had big lights on the side of it. And they were flashing oh, uh, the lights. Close Encounters. Close Encounters. Is that Close time. Encounters? And they go. And they were like, this is how we're going to communicate with the aliens. And I just watched that going, what asshole thought that a moving flying object with bright lights was going to be a way to welcome a fucking alien to the planet? It what worked. about Frank? You would know this movie. Um, it's a boy where he gets lost in the woods, and then he go. He's on a space like a you know like a a spaceship. When well, spaceship, alien ship, and there's this little thing on the ship, this little animal looking thing. You know this movie. Wait, he's lost in the woods, and then all of a sudden he's on a spaceship. Yeah. What else happens? In, I and, don't know he comes back to like earth but then he's weird after that and then he's in the hospital at one point too you know this movie i forgot the name it's not close encounters it's something else do you know any of the actors i don't but there's a beach boys song playing in the <laughs> Is it guardians of the galaxy no no <laughs> um it's from the 80s uh starman no, no distant Damn, encounters no. <laughs> oh. I don't know. Oh, it's so good. Mac oh, and me? The... No. Love I'm going to have anyone in the comments, please. It was this I little know. tiny animal alien on the ship. It was really cute. And I always wanted to go on that ship. Unfortunately, that space? didn't happen. It's a movie in the 90s, Lost in Space. But, it, you know, they, the whole family went into outer space. There was a little alien no. with them. No, no just, just, just the boy. I got nothing. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Was it uh, Paul? The movie Paul? It wasn't the 80s. That was like 10 years ago. No. I don't know. Darn it. It's not hitting me. I, can't... I feel like we have to fantasize that the aliens coming will be a peaceful thing because we can't imagine like the alternative. Mm -hmm. We would just be blown out of like there's. Oh, instantly. And we would not like, make it. You don't think so. But back in no. the day, like 80s and 90s, generally. It was good reception from the aliens. After that, you have to admit, every every movie after that was not good. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of disaster stuff with aliens. Yeah, yeah. War of the Worlds. Um, what was that? Other Independence one? Day. Cloverfield. Independence Day. Oh, Cloverfield. Not good. Yeah. Cloverfield, I went to see with my husband, and I was so into the movie that he got so sick from the camera angles that he had to get yeah. up and leave. <laughs> really? That was a shaky one. <laughs> yeah. That was, was like, that was like a found footage one. Go, go, go. It's okay. I'm good here. Well, like, you got to think. The notes. You got to think any, oh, okay. any species that can travel from whatever planet to ours <clears throat> will have superior firepower. They're not, we're, they're going to blow us away in, in terms of whatever weapons oh, they I might have. I don't think so. If they have the technology to go from where they are to where mm -hmm. we are, and we, ha we aren't even close to that then their firepower is probably going to be superior too. Yeah, we'd, we'd Thanks, like to Frank. think there's a Will Smith that's going to save us, <laughs> but I, I don't think so. It all depends on if they're doing it out of either one, they're doing it out of discovery, or two, they're doing it out of... <coughs> excuse me. They need to relocate or something. Could that's you the cough only... harder into the microphone? <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my Honestly. God. <laughs> I had this... I don't want to be gross, but I've had this tickle in my it. throat. <laughs> I've had this tickle in my throat since about 4 p.m. He's going to kill me, my husband. So, Why is that if gross? If I'm dead tomorrow. Oh, it's so gross. Just a tickle. A tickle in your throat? Yeah. That's not gross. Yeah. What, was that, tickle. what was that TV show? Do you guys remember this? It didn't last long, but the premise was that the aliens came. They landed on Earth, and they were Alf. here. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> they were here for peace. And then as time went on, like that was only their little method of like disarming us and putting us at ease. It was like on channels four or set. It was like on NBC or ABC. It was a TV show. It didn't last long because it was like a TV show. It got canceled. But I love the premise of like they were here and they were going to share their technology with us. And it was going to be hmm. this whole big, great thing. And people were like, should we trust the aliens? Should we not trust the aliens? And then the people that felt that we should trust the aliens won. And then the aliens, like they were, they were, their whole plan right. was to do that and then take us over anyway. I thought I was like, <laughs> if that's gonna happen, like up. that's the way it's gonna happen. They're gonna oh. come down and gain our trust. I think if they come to us, we're gonna be like the way we treat 
dogs. We're, they're going to be a superior intelligence. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be able to maybe speak to them, but they're not going to, they're going to, their language is going to be way more complicated than ours. Right. I just think they're going to be like smarter because, because of the fact, the simple fact that they made it here. If they can do that, then everything else is going to be. They're definitely smarter than us. They're gonna Look at me smarter. coughing into a microphone. <laughs> yeah, you think they cough in the microphones? <laughs> I don't think so. Definitely that's why, not. That's why we got to, that's why Portnoy should shut up. We got to get behind that Elon because he's the only one that's going to get us off to another planet. He's probably, he probably is an alien. The best is, uh, Katy Perry singing that song about having sex with an alien. That that song is one of my favorite songs. Extraterrestrial? Yes. yes. Kiss me. Kick it, kiss me. Fill me with your poison. That, that is nice. like one of the best. Like if you listen to the words to that song, you're gonna be like, holy shit, that's not a good song. <laughs> so an alien comes down and, um, and wants and wants to mate with you. You doing it? If he's yep. if he's over fifty years old, no. <laughs> she means like if he's elderly looking. If he's an elderly alien, <laughs> if he's an alien, right? Exactly. Um, I would probably do it because obviously, if they're superior than us, then they probably know how to do certain things to women. Uh, you would do it for the enjoyment, not for the yes intermingling of whatever, mm-hmm. and like to have an probably, alien baby. I probably could arrive in a minute or so. So, yep. Thank you. That's what Arrival is all about. <laughs> the movie Arrival. That's what that's about. Oh, really? <laughs> is no. it really? I'm, uh, no, not at all. <laughs> On Skinamax, maybe. I'll yeah. tell you what. That's a great premise for a movie. Aliens come and the first alien yeah. couple. Boom. Who's the first alien couple? And how do they try and raise their kid? And, you know, how does that turn yeah, they out? Did, they did that in Coneheads. No, but that, but we could do it much better. Okay, thank you, Oscars 2022. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Coneheads was great, but I'm talking about like a real serious. I would love to see how that would play out. So it's an alien species that looks like an alien species. They don't yeah, look that, that's Frank. You took the words right out of my mouth. Are they going to look like a human? Or are they going to look like aliens? I think right. for the movie, you'd have to. They'd have to be as different from us as possible. And they're just trying to be. They're just trying to adapt and live in in the world. Yeah, let's say they're not hostile and they, they, they do give us some technology and they're like, here, this is how you could do things better. Let's let's there exist is a TV together. Show. And then there there's a, a there's a crazy woman who can't talk into a microphone and she falls in love with the leader and he falls in love with her. And <laughs> there it is. I like it. The people who again it's Rick the people who made Rick and Morty made this other show. It's a cartoon. I mean, are they paying you on the side or something? What's I don't happening know what to tell here? You. I feel like I just it happens to line up with what you're talking about. Okay. It's, um... Rick and Morty's under his desk right now. <laughs> it's like every 10 minutes he plugs Rick and Morty for Christ's sake. I don't know sake. what to tell you. But What's the name of it, Frank? I'm, I'm trying to... Uh, what the hell is it? If you say weeknights at 10 on the Cartoon Network, I'm going to kick you off the show because I can't have side deals. <laughs> no, it's on like Hulu or something. Do you, he, do you see what he just did there, Janine? Do you see what he yeah, just I did? Yeah, I, I know. He's like, you're incorrect, Frank. It's on Hulu, on demand, whatever. It's, yeah, Solar Opposites. Those are the aliens. Whatever. Frank stopped just shy of saying, use the use promo code Frank and get 5% off your Hulu subscription. I really didn't do anything like that. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. But um, it's called Solar Damn. Opposites. It's, a, it's an alien family who crashed on Earth and is stuck there, and they're trying to live like normal people. And all the while, they're trying to figure out how to get off of Earth and... And they're trying to also live in like a regular house in a regular neighborhood. Yeah, I but mean, it's common. I like... it's, it's, you know. I'll tell you what. Th- let me explain to you my fantasy. This would be my <laughs> thrill in life. Oh God! If aliens came here and Janine fell in love with them and had an alien baby, and then the aliens passed a rule that nobody's allowed to watch Rick and Morty anymore, that would make me so happy. <laughs> Frank looks just defeated right now. First of all, Rick and Morty is <laughs> fucking hilarious. Sorry. All right, we have to end this show because we've we've hit the cough limit. <laughs> yeah, honestly. What the hell is going on? You got the Rona? Is that COVID cough? No, I, it is tickling. My, okay, I'm going to tell you. I swallowed my own spit the wrong way before. That's how That's blonde said. I am. I had Who was holding the camera? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, he was about seven feet tall, grayish tone. <laughs> Wait, and his name was my own spit? That's a weird name. Yeah. Hi-oh. I mean, that's what it translated to on my phone. Boom. Yeah, what if they look like that? If they look like those big gray 
giant eyed aliens. Are you you down with that? I down mean, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Is there any doubt that a female human would sleep with an alien before a male human would sleep with an alien? Like, I feel like women no. would win that race. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Not, and you I don't want to see- discount my transgender people. I apologize, <laughs> but I feel like a woman would would get the hit there first. She, she would get there first before anybody. Maybe, especially because- with the arrival time. Definitely. Yeah. Maybe because anytime you picture an alien, they kind of look primarily male, just because they yeah. don't look very feminine. I was going to say do. they look gross, and women are really and weird to go for gross people. Yeah. They yeah. look at Frank's wife. Right. Hey. <laughs> she she got she got yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> she got <laughs> She did okay. Did she? I, she yeah, she may have gotten the crappy end of this Kiss deal. <laughs> now I want to listen to that song. Thank you. I'm going to go listen to it. You brought it up. Get off. It's but it's a good song. It is a good song. Any final thoughts? Um Fill me with your poison. Inject me with your loving. <laughs> there you go. We'll leave it there. We'll leave it with the great Katy Perry. Why does every pop star at some point or another cut their hair and go completely batshit crazy? Mm. Katy Perry, Demi Lovato. It's, there's some link to the short hair and the and Mikey, Britney Spears. Mikey, Miley Cyrus. Miley, Miley Cyrus. got weird with the short hair. What is that? Yeah, I don't think I don't Lady know. Gaga did it yet. No, she wears Madonna. Madonna did it too. Madonna had a short haired time period. Yeah, Yeah, she did the short hair thing. I don't think short hair looks good on women ever. I agree. Sometimes. Mm, No, I don't think Gaetano will say he doesn't think any woman should cut their hair short. He's like, it could be the most beautiful woman if she has short hair. Yeah, I agree. And I agree. Hmm. I feel like Charlize Theron was the closest to pulling it off and still kind of felt also, but she didn't yeah. get it that short. I feel like, I don't know if she got right. that short. Yeah. How short are we talking? Like my hair? Yeah. Yeah. It depends. I mean, I don't know, man. I feel like, uh, remember what's her name? Uh, Demi Moore. She cut her hair like that and she wasn't bad. Yeah. I don't like short hair. I don't Back know. in the day when she did like GI Jane. <clears throat> oh yeah. To me, Moore was in G.I. Jane. She was G.I. Jane. <coughs> is that right? That is right. Yeah. Viggo Mortensen. All right. Look at. Okay. Here's Charlize. Let's take a look at Charlize. She, she looks good. It, no. Look, look at. Now look at the one in the bottom corner. You see when she's got a little like the Meg Ryan look like look how much right. better that is than the short short. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Right. No, no. Yeah. I mean, they, yeah, I guess. But they, they both look. They look OK. She looks. She looks good no matter what you did to her. I had a friend who used to like, he used to be like, oh my God, I love girls with short hair. Really? Love them. And like, really? I mean, they like the pixie look or like really like crew cut? Like, like short, like you just saw her like, just mm. like no hair, no thanks. And he, he did date a girl with really short hair too. And I'm like, All right, well, some people could pull it but off. If you're ba- no, but if you're banging them from behind and you look <laughs> down, I'm sorry. But true, if you're banging them from behind and you look down and you see short hair, it's gonna look like a dude. Yeah, but if you look at anything other than their their head, it, it's not gonna. Uh, Janine, like, I yeah, thought you were gonna go. say. I thought you were gonna say, "What do you grab onto?" That's what I thought you were gonna say. Uh, <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> by the way, Demi's Demi's uh, short hair is very <clears throat> '80s. I feel like that only happened really in the '80s, early '90s. Yeah. Yeah, not cute. Who else? Short hair. I think if there was any, there's Winona. Look, Winona. It looked like she slipped yeah, into yeah. this Google search. She doesn't look That's good with weird. the short hair. Yeah, it's, it, it depends. Every now and then you get a good. I don't know if did what's her name ever Scar Joe ever do short hair? I think so. Yeah, I don't. I didn't care for it. Oh, yeah. She did. No. You can't mess her up. No. <laughs> oh, I guess that's your. She is so beautiful, oh, Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. She's in my top five. <laughs> I watched, wow. I'll tell you what I watched the other night. He's just not that into you. Like, I voluntarily watched it. I don't know why. Is she in that? 
Yeah, she was in that. She was with uh, Bradley Cooper. She? Yeah. Oh, oh, that's right. Oh, he was. They were married for a while, I think, right? No, Charlie Scarlett Johansson and Bradley Cooper. <clears throat> Are they not? I don't know. I'm, I'm confused on all this. Alert. I can't get everybody's. You can stick to the Rick and Morty the stuff. SNL. You're the Rick and Morty so guy. Rick and let, Morty. let Janine do this. Those Season five stuff. coming out soon of Rick and Morty. Well, well he <laughs> wasn't. Wait. He wasn't totally wrong because she was, um, or I don't know if she still is, uh, married to the guy from SNL. Yeah, I don't know if they're married, but they're definitely together. No, they're married. And they, they kind of ju- look alike. Oh, they just they got, got married. They married them. Yeah, Jost. Something Jost. Yes. Colin Jost. Colin, Colin Jost. Yeah. On that Scarlet note, Jost. we're really going on a... All right. She's still Scar Joe. Mm-hmm. Still, it still counts. Name. Yeah, it still counts. I love when you say, let's leave it there, and then 20 <laughs> minutes go by, and, and we haven't left it there yet. <laughs> All right, we'll leave it there Okay, now. here's to alien sex. To alien sex. Uh, by oh, the way... Sex. I think you said sex. The best alien porn... Links are at anthonyonair.com. Go check that out right now. Yeah, I'll add them. That's probably a lie. Maybe we should start selling alien porn on our shop, our store. Who's buying porn? Does anybody buy porn? All right, maybe we'll start giving it away on our store. Uh, <laughs> links and info at anthonyonair.com. Appreciate you guys watching and are listening, especially all the way through this last segment. I'm we'll sorry. catch you guys on the next one. God bless one. you. <laughs> you want to do one more cough before we go, or are you good? <laughs> Cough us out.